because you had said in the past, wasn't it interesting that in every single game, Austin Gleason seems to have played, you know, everyone else has been rotated. He was being played all the time. I think they want to keep him in form. They want to keep him on, t- on the, the top of the ground. I would have said they looked at the footage and just said, you know what, we're wasting our time here and we're just going to keep this dragged out in the media for another couple of days. And you know the way often these DRA cases and they're up to the 11th hour. I remember what happened with Dear McConnelly and, you know, those ones over the years. I think it's just unnecessary energy and drawing more attention on yourself. And they just said, you know what, it's a pretty cut and dry case here. We might as well just take our medicine and move on. That, that would have been my thought on it. Maybe you'd be the same. Yeah, no, I, I, I do, I do think the same. I don't think I think they had very little case, but I do, uh, I do agree with you now. I, I, I maybe I'm agreeing with myself actually. I think Milan actually, <laughs> Milan in all four is the last big one I can remember where, um, and I know we're chatting John before about this. He just said that he had to take his medicine and uh, kind of the penny dropped with him. He said thereafter about you know learning not to react on the pitch, learning that lads are going to try and rile you up, that you're going to be an easier target now. And Ozzy's probably going to be an easier target for some players to try and rile up and look for a reaction on, on the back of this. But you'd hope he'd you know sit back and reflect because like to me, you know, over the last couple of years, he's been one of the most consistent players in Ireland. Outside of a couple of Limerick players, probably Lynch, Morrissey, uh, Gerard Hegarty, maybe Dan Morrissey, and one or two others. To me, he's been right up there as one of the most consistent players in the game. And if, if, if a little bit of self reflection is what's needed now, just for him to be perfectly on an even keel come Munster, and for this not to happen in the latter stages of the championship, maybe then that's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Richard Hogan says protecting him because Cork would try to wind him up. Exactly, Shane takes the focus off the game and brings pressure on yourself. I just want to jump back to the tactics board here. It'd be interesting if Gleeson was here and maybe up against Joyce or maybe even would, would he like to, to go in at number 11 and see will Mark Coleman come on to him or play off him? Maybe even someone like Jack Prendergast who often wears 15. He might have even worn 12 the last day, scored a great goal. You know, Would he come in here and try and run at Coleman? But uh, there's a few other things that stand out. I think Patrick uh, Collins, I mean, he's such laser like puck outs. And uh, like they definitely have the edge in terms of like a playmaking goalkeeper from the back, someone who's so comfortable to come out and take it anywhere. You know, obviously, this will probably be two men inside. And we spoke to Stephen O'Keefe recently about the evolution of goalkeepers. You know, you might have those t- other two guys out there. And he said a lot of it is because you have two forwards playing in like that, they actually just have loads of space to move into. So Patrick Collins. And I know Sean O'Brien or Billy Nolan, whoever plays up at the other end, they are good promising goalkeepers, but it's just Collins really is playing uh, some brilliant stuff at the moment. But Mikey Kiley, he's one of these players that didn't go brilliantly for him the last day. He got a point for himself, but you can see that you can imagine that he would play this game and provide a very, uh, along with Desi Hutchinson, going to provide a very tough test for this Cork full back line because to me, they look like the area that's most vulnerable in this team. And then another thing is, the battle of the two centre backs. Like, do you look at Tyke de Burka, who's you know just a, such an imperious player? And part of that is the pressure that Watford put out the field. It allows him to sit back and really do like sit back quite deep and be able to judge across the lines to pick up ball absolutely everywhere. Like, do you think himself and Mark Coleman play a similar game or a very different game? Uh, well, there are there are some similarities in the, their positioning, maybe, uh, and how good distributors they maybe are on the ball. But like you'd have to say, De Borca, to an extent, has been playing this role since 2015, on and off with two cruciates in the middle of that. So like he really has it down to a fine art. And you could, like you could, I don't even know if he'd be able to explain what he does. It's that na- Do you know when something is that natural to someone that mm. he mightn't actually be able to able to explain what he does? Um, it's just something that he just falls into the right spots. I, tell I you think what, he re- reads players' what? movements, opposition players' yeah. movements. You know, you're, everyone's trying to do that. You're trying to judge where it'll go next, but he just must be able to read players' movements really well. Yeah, to play that role, I think instinct is probably the word you have to have. Mm, you have yeah. to have an instinct of what way a lad is shaping, even what he's done previously. Like if you're if you're analysing, I would say he probably analyses the the opposing half backs more than he analyses anybody else on the pitch because they are generally the ones half backs midfielders that are given the ball that he's going to be trying to basically uh, read. So I'd say he um I'd say he analyses them quite a bit. He I don't know. De Borca can play the role, the free role, while still not leaving his man as free, maybe, as Coleman does. Sometimes when Coleman plays that free role, his man can have the you know the luxury of the pitch in front of him, whereas De Borca plays that sticker twist really, really well, whereas 
you know, I know Park Wall chipping for a couple of points in the in that league game in Nolan Park, but generally you don't see the man he's marking doing a huge amount of damage. I suppose that's a lot to do with his communication with his midfielder and getting his midfielder to probably drop back as well. Just a, on a flip uh, a point that you made there, I do think it's the full back lines, um, both full back lines, the Cork full back line and the Waterford full back line. If you're looking at an areas of potential weakness, not just on Saturday night, but potential weaknesses going forward, that's probably where teams would, would focus maybe their, their attention most.